Here you have a kinematics question with a 0 to 60 time uh, for a car or uh, 0 to 26.8 meters per second. Let's take a second and uh, label these. This 0 here is going to be the initial velocity. 26.8 meters per second is going to be the final velocity. And you're told that the time is 3.75 seconds, which is a very good 0 to 60 time for a car. If you're going to calculate the acceleration, by definition, it's the change in velocity over the time. Change in anything is final minus initial, so this will be final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time. And since your final velocity is 28.6, your initial velocity is 0 meters per second and your time is 3.75 seconds, when you plug that into your calculator, what you should get is 7.15 meters per second squared. Now this question asks us to calculate the net force required to accelerate the car. The way you're going to calculate the net force, the definition of Newton's second law we're going to use is that the net force is equal to mass times the acceleration, the mass you're told is 1,250 kilograms, and the acceleration you use is the one you just calculated, 7.15 meters per second squared, which when you put in your calculator should give you 8,938 newtons. Continuing along, you're asked to uh, determine what is the normal force exerted by the road on the car. Well, the car's not sinking into the ground, and it's not flying into the air, which means that the weight force going down must be exactly balanced by the normal force going up. In other words, the normal force and the... Uh, weight force are exactly the same magnitude, they're just opposite directions. You're told this is a 12,300 uh, Newton car, so you can say the normal force must be 12,300 Newtons. And that's all you have to do for that one. Now 68 asks you to calculate the uh, force of friction between uh, the car and the road. So to do that we're going to use the equation for friction which is fun. F equals mu n. You're told that the coefficient of friction is 0 0.8. Notice coefficient of friction doesn't have any units because it's just a ratio of the friction force compared to the normal force. So if you have a coefficient of friction 0.8 what that means is the largest friction force you can get is 0.8 or 80 percent times the, the normal force which for something that's flat not on an incline or anything would be the same as the weight force 12,300 newtons and when you put that in your calculator 0.8 times 12,300 newtons you get 9,840 newtons And then for 69, this qualitative question, use these values to explain whether or not that's possible, whether the claim that you can do a 0 to 60 in 3.75 seconds is plausible. And the answer is yes, it is. And the reason we can say that is that the force required to get the car to accelerate that quickly is about 9,000 newtons, 8,938. The maximum friction force you can get with the road is 9,840 newtons. So what I would say is because the force required to get that acceleration is less than the maximum friction force, yes, it is impossible. Yes, it is possible. So in words, that is. Because the force required to accelerate the car is less than the friction force available, or the maximum friction force available.
Now, the last question on this page is a unit analysis question. So it's useful to be able to take an equation and derive or determine what the units are going to be. So to do that, you start off with the equation, in this case, v squared divided by d, and you substitute in units. I like to do it in brackets. The units for velocity are meters per second. So I plug it in just like it was a number. The units for displacement are meters. So when I square that, I get meters squared over second squared divided by meters, which is the same as meters squared over second squared times 1 over m. Notice this crosses off with this, and you are indeed left with meters per second squared. And everybody's happy. At least I'm happy.